So I've downloaded and installed a bunch of essential graphics that I bought from a website. But here's the thing with them. If I grab one of them, let's take this one here, for example, and I place it into my project. It's got a couple things going on. One, it's got a default name, default at, and a little placeholder for a logo or something like that. And you can see that it looks like the text is out of alignment. So I can't edit this with any central graphics. So if I go over to edit and I click on that particular graphic, you can see it gives me an option so I can change the name to whatever and it will update. And I can do that each and every time. You can also change the location so that bottom text that's out of alignment. So with this particular one, they did give me the option of changing a lot of stuff, which is nice, right? But the thing is, I'm gonna have to do this every single time I use this template, right? So what I want to do is edit the .mogrip file in After Effects, so that way every time I use this particular one, it's the way I want. If you wanna know how to download and install .mogrip files, I've got plenty of tutorials on this channel, uh, so I'm not gonna show you how to do that. So here's the files I downloaded and installed. The one I want to edit is this one here, Social Media 3. So that's uh, this one right here. So if you go to try to actually right click and open with, it's not gonna give you an option of opening in After Effects. So what you wanna do is go into After Effects and go to File, Open Project. Go to wherever it is you have those files saved. So I'm gonna grab that one and I'm gonna hit Open. What it's going to do here now is it's going to create a .aep file. So it's going to create an After Effects file. So you can decide where you want to put it. Do you want to put it in a different folder or do you want to put it in the same folder? Uh, in this case, I'm just going to put it in the same folder. So I'm going to hit Extract. And this one needs to be updated because it's an older file. So just hit OK in my case. So you can see here we've already got our Essential Graphics open. If you don't see that, just go to Windows Essential Graphics to open it. So we can see all the editable fields. That, that's where this comes from. But I need to change some of the default settings first. So I'm just gonna double click on the file and I'm gonna go into where I want to make these changes. I'm not gonna show you fully how to do this because there are plenty of other channels that are way better at editing in After Effects than I am. So I'm just gonna do this real quick and we'll jump back to the part where we send it back to Premiere Pro. Okay, so what you can see there is I added my logo. What I did is I just sized it the size that I wanted and I attached it to the main null, which is the action that's going on here. So that way it raises up at the same time as that little bottom bit. I also want to make sure that I can edit this if I need to. So maybe I don't necessarily always want to use this logo. I might want to use another one. So within that special graphics panel, I'm just going to drag and drop it in there. And you'll see I've now got that visible. I'm going to change it to just logo so that way I know what it is. I'm going to set the default uh, scale to fit instead of scale to fill. And now I can edit this logo if I need to later on. The other changes that I wanted to make that I mentioned are, of course, the source text name. And let's go and underneath, I'm going to add the website for the social media. And if you recall, that text was a bit too far over to the left that I didn't like. So I liked it when I moved it previously on line two to negative 316. Looked good. So I'm just going to grab that, go back in here, grab my line two, position, and negative 316. There we go. Now I've got it every th the way I want it. I can change the name if I want to. I'm just going to throw a V2 at the end of it so I know that it's separate. Now you need to go export motion graphics template. 
the project needs to be saved because it needs to save that AEP file. I'm going to save it in that same place that I already saved it, but you can save it somewhere else if you want. You can rename it if you want as well. So now it's asking me where I want to save the file. I'm just going to save it into my template file, but you can save it in another location if you prefer. I'm going to add a keyword. So that way I can search by keywords if you want. But you don't need to do keywords. Hit OK. This is going to quickly pop it back in. So this is really nice. You don't need to like close Premiere Pro and relaunch it. It will already jump back into Premiere Pro. So let's go back up. Let's jump over to browse. Let's do a quick search. You can see it came back. I just searched by that keyword, but you could search by the name or whatever. I'm going to drag and drop it onto my timeline. And you can see now I've got my new default of this. What you can still do is make your edits just like before. And with that logo, since I put the logo in there, now I can edit that logo if I want. So this is where I mentioned scale to fit because it fit. By default, it has scale to fill. Sometimes it might make it too large, uh, no scale, whatever. So it's kind of a handy little thing if I want to replace that logo. So I can just go click the little dots there, replace from Explorer, go to one of my other logos, hit open, and boom, there we go. So it popped it in there. Nifty stuff. Um, like I said, I don't normally do a lot of After Effects stuff, but since this is Premiere Pro related as well, and this is how I did it, hopefully it'll help you do the same.